Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Benji Summers United. We had Benji Summers here, I'm Dougley James, and that's some bloke we don't know. We pulled him off the street, as you can tell by his hairstyle. <laughs> now let's go straight into <laughs> the questions. When's the next live stream and when can we join on Discord? No, Yesterday. That's... Give us plenty of notice when you. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, I've gone too right far down. I've lost the question. That's the end of the QA <laughs> for today. Thank you very much for tuning in and giving us all your money. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our 20,000 QA. Uh, we're just going to be answering all the questions you left on the announcement video and hopefully you'll get to know us a bit better. Um, well, maybe. There so, are three of us. Yeah. Here, but there's another one. Here. Yeah, so... Let's just our first question. Yeah, answering <coughs> one of the first questions uh, we've got here is, uh, that's all I want to know, how many of you is it? So we thought, you know, introduction question. There's us three. There's us three. And someone behind the camera. You'll probably see him later. Um, I'm Ben, the one the, the channel's named after. I'm this, Douglas, yeah. um, the channel isn't named after me, but I do seven days of science, which I don't think many people know, we're two different people. He we does are. the Sunday videos most of the time, and I do the uh, Wednesday seven days of science videos. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm Ollie, and I'm his brother, and his I do just, you know, random videos. I do the octopus videos, because octopus is <laughs> the best. Ollie's Octopuses, that's yes. the, the informal series we're having. I'm Amanda, here behind the camera, I, uh, I write the music uh, sometimes. Uh, also, uh, my link is always in the description, uh, hopefully in this video as well, so uh, make sure you click that. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions here about the origin of the channel. thought it would be good to answer that probably. So, first of all, from Unprofessionally Professional, we have what made you all start a channel together? And oh yeah, and uh, from John De Francisco, uh, I would like to know how old each of you are, how long you've been friends, how you met, and why you decided to make a channel together, which is great by the way, thank you very much. And also, are you going to make more funny videos of you guys? I guess it's referencing the Youth Forest one. Yes, probably. Well, <coughs> how old are we? I am within the age, I, I'm, I'm still in education, which could mean I'm 9 to 25, so <laughs> make, make from that. Make from as you want. Uh, yeah, I'm also in that range, but slightly older. Um, <laughs> yeah, a few months. I, I'm, I'm also in that range, but significantly, significantly younger. I'm also uh, <laughs> slightly older than Ben. But, uh, yeah, okay, so why did we start a channel together? Well, why not? Then? Yeah. <laughs> um, the, I first made a channel back in 2012. It was a very long time ago, when my granddad told me about YouTube and all the things you can do with it. Uh, I didn't actually upload anything for like, about a year. And then sometime in 2013, we went on a holiday to Florida, and I just filmed like all the wildlife we saw, alligators and stuff, and I decided I want to make a documentary about this. It was awful, it's still on the channel, you can go and see it, it's the very first video. It's really bad, but yeah. it was a lot of fun doing it. He and narrated it. It's narrated by me, uh, <laughs> my voice is very high and screechy. But it was our beginning. You must have been yeah. five years old when that. No, it's like. <laughs> anyway, um, we go back. <laughs> Wait, it was like 10. <laughs> and then in 2015, I started uh, deciding to like make top 10 dinosaur videos, which a few of them are still up, I think. I might privated some of them because they were really bad. Uh, and then I just started doing random animal stuff, animal videos. Uh, Fossil Friday, that was yeah, an old yeah, series. We all love Friday. And then it was like the, the uh, last year, September last year, I was like talking to Doug. Yeah, yeah, talk, talking to everyone. I was like, well, we could all like contribute to the channel and then get like a lot more videos out. And so we started doing weekly uploads and we've actually managed to upload like. Well, and then two videos a week since September of last year, which is quite cool. I think um, I, I joined the channel. Um, I, we were just laughing around, and um, I, I said I'd, I'd narrate a video, and a couple of other friends narrated a video. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know which one that is. I don't know if it's still there. It's uh, some of the the Christmas special Fossil Friday. Christmas oh, yeah, special. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I narrated a couple of videos in the early days. The Christmas special Fossil Friday, um, and there's there's also a Tortoise one and. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the tortoise one, the Royal Tyrell one. Yeah. Um, that was about a year, a year ago, it says. And then there's the next Christmas special I did that, and then there's some bloopers from me because I kept on messing up. <laughs> uh, go check that out, it's quite funny. And then uh, I, I think we decided that we could make this a proper thing and we could really push for it. 
um, if, if we uploaded regularly. I think you just started making one video a week. Yeah. Uh, I, and I said, well, let's, let's really, let's try and do this. And Ben said, yeah, let, let's, let's go into this together, obviously, with, with Ollie here too, and Matt doing the music. So the channel started doing kind of well after we did one video a week. Yeah, and yeah, I thought, I was this was, was like uh, 500 subscribers and then within a few months <laughs> it kind of exploded due yeah. to the regular uploads. Yeah, I and I thought well, look, if we do one video a week and it's doing quite well, what happens if we do a second video a week? So then Seven Days of Science happened uh, a few months after I suggested it because I was quite busy for a while um, and here we are today uploading two videos a week so yeah. there you go. So we've got a question here from Marvin Becker. What is your opinion about resurrecting extinct animals? Do you think it's possible? Do you think it's ethical? And what animal would you like to bring back? Well, I have an opinion on that. I mean, it seems like it is becoming possible, especially with mammoths, uh, probably woolly rhinos, I guess. Don't know too much about it. But uh, whether it's ethical or not, I'd say it's probably not ethical because like, it would cost quite a lot of money to, like, first of all, actually bring it back. Uh, and then also conserve it in the, in the land it would be, you know, you could spend that money on actually protecting like still living endangered animals that need it more. Instead of bringing something back, you could try to stop animals that are endangered already from going extinct anyway. If it was more ethical and you could, then I'd say I'd, like, I'd most like to see a mammoth probably, that would just be cool. Do you want to come in? <laughs> Cat wants to come in. Building on Ben's point, I would say bringing back any animal that was made extinct by humans would be good, but like bringing back a T-Rex, no, because you know, Jurassic Park. Also, probably um, not possible. Yeah, but like with like the North Northern White Rhino, that was made extinct by humans, so probably bring that back. Um, so yeah. My opinion, um, yeah, I'm sure there will be, people will try it, whether it's um, ethical or not. Um, and I reckon if it does become you know, quite, not easy to do, but possible to do, um, woolly, ma woolly mammoths are going to come back, probably. Um, I'm just looking at the inevitable, to be honest. Should the money be put into something else, like, you know, like Ben says, uh, saving animals that are close to extinction but not quite extinct yet? Probably. Is it going to be? Probably not. Um, but it would be cool to see a woolly mammoth running around. Okay, so we've got a few questions here asking uh, what our favourite prehistoric creatures are. So we're going to answer that now. Uh, I'll go first. I'd say my favourite prehistoric creature is Anomalocaris, just because it's so cool. It was like one of the top predators of the time it was alive. Um, but not only that, there are like giant filter feeding kind of whale versions of them as well. Which just, you know, they're just cool. So. You want to go? Um, I would have to say the Castoroides, which was the giant beaver, just because in real life I love beavers and having a giant version of that would be pretty cool. And, you know, they could build massive dams, so it'd be pretty cool. Ankylosaurus is mine, go straight to the point. Um, I, I've always liked it since I was a little kid just because it's got a massive club as its tail. Um, I know most little kids love the T Rex. Um, and I thought, no, no, this can be the T-Rex, just whack it with its tail and boom, it's dead. Um, obviously quite some force would be needed to do that. But yeah, I just think it's really cool. Um, and it, it, like, it's, it's an interesting defence mechanism that you don't really see around nowadays. Like biting, who cares, scratching, I don't care. Um, whacking someone with your really heavy tail, I love it. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my favourite prehistoric animal. What's the next one? Okay, we've got a question here from Harley the Player. Uh, they ask, do you believe in the flat earth theory? Well, I mean, I think we can all answer that quite easily. Guys, three, two, one. No. no. Yes. Okay, so a question from William Greich. I noticed a Sniad creature in your banner. Will there be a video on speculative evolution at some point? Uh, yeah, I'd love to do some, some videos on that. It's a really interesting topic that I'm very interested in. We kind of touched on it uh, in the last episode of our Mysteries of Life series when we did, like, how will life go extinct? And we kind of did some uh, Dougal Dixon speculative evolution stuff, but like actually looking at, um, yeah, like CM Kozman's Sniad and, and all sorts like that, that would be really cool, so yes, definitely. Okay, we've got a question here from Nestlig20. How do you feel about the upcoming Jurassic World movie? Well, personally, I'm very excited for it. Um, 
I know they've kind of spoiled the entire film in the trailers, but I think there's a lot we still haven't seen. I think it's gonna be—it's definitely gonna be better than Jurassic World. I hope. Probably not as good as Jurassic Park because nothing can be that film. Still my favorite film of all time. But I'm very excited. It looks—I I think the, the dark tone that it's taking is uh, is promising, and the Indoraptor looks looks pretty scary. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna go and see it as soon as I can, probably. And I'll actually—we'll probably make a video on our, our thoughts on it because you know. It's a fairly major, like, paleontological thing that happens that, you know, a lot of people in the public are exposed to paleontology and dinosaurs and stuff, so it is important, I think. Your opinion? Jurassic World, I think it looks brilliant. Um, speaking of spoilers, mm. um, you, you said that reminded me of, was it Terminator Genesis, the, the recent one? Yeah. Where they did a big spoiler in the trailer, but it turns out that wasn't the major twist. And that wasn't the kind of there was something else there. That's why they yeah. really uh, revealed that in the trailer. So I'm I'm tempted to say maybe there's something like else there. That there is telling us. There is a major character who hasn't been any in any of the trailers, but we know owns the manor that it's in. So ben, okay, Benjamin yeah. Lockwood. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's a Jurassic uh, Park movie, so it's gonna be like you know better than most <laughs> other movies. Um, <laughs> I mean, I agree with Ben when saying it's kind of annoying they've given away so much in the trailers, but from looking at the trailers, it is going to be pretty epic. Uh, we got a question here from uh, Barzi, beside Rowan, um, saying, when are you going to replace Dougie with text-to-speech? Well, we already have. Uh, we've got a few questions about favourite dinosaurs. Let's answer. Uh, to each of you, what is your favourite dinosaurs? Well. Therizinosaurus is mine. It's just, it's like herbivorous theropods, you know. It's cool. It's weird. It's got massive scythe claw things. It's just great. What's yours? Uh, mine would be Mei Long, which is Sleeping Dragon, uh, just because I saw some dino art of it, and ever since paleo then, art. paleo art. Sorry. Dino art. Ever since then, I've like I don't know. I've just been fascinated with it. It just looks so like tiny and cute and adorable. So that's why I like it. I like the Ankylosaurus. Okay, so here is a question from Marvin Becker. Will you do more real life videos in the future, uh, Ben? Yes, definitely. We're planning to do uh, just like going out to random bits of wilderness in the UK, which there aren't many. You guys apparently enjoyed our, uh, yeah. our new forest one, which, which is great, thank you so much. Um, and because of the pos positive reception from that, um, we're thinking of doing lots more over the next. Yeah, and it was, just, it was really one. fun to do. Um, possibly one where we go to the Isle of Wight and look at some fossil hunting areas around there. That could be interesting. Jurassic and, Coast. Uh, yeah, we could go to the Jurassic Coast as well. We got a question here from Mr. Science. How many species do you think are in the genus Homo and what are they? I know this is a debated topic, so I'm going to pass it over to Ben. Right. So it's actually quite interesting. Uh, some people think that there's like very few of them. So they say that like Homo sapiens could include Neanderthals as a subspecies. And there was, there, I was looking at this nature thing um, that's suggesting that Homo erectus actually includes Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis within it. There's a lot of problems with determining how many there are because a lot of the species are named on like really fragmentary fossils which is not great at all. So some people think there are very few, like as few as three I think, um, but then other people that I think there's a lot. Personally, this is an opinion here, I don't know nearly enough about hominid evolution to have a proper, proper take on it, but I, I would f probably favour fewer species just because uh, I think it's better to lump than split in general. Uh, and yeah, obviously the, I think there'd be a lot of subspecies, so like uh, uh, Denisovans and the Red Deer Cave people could be subspecies of Homo sapiens, and maybe uh, Neanderthals are as well. But that's an opinion. I'm not, I'm no hominid expert, so yeah. A question here from uh, Joe Bunan. Um, for Douglas, what's the kind of things you get up to in your day-to-day -day life? Well, this, this is all I do. So we've got a few questions here kind of asking uh, what our favourite living animals are. Uh, Non-dinosaurian though, so it can't be birds. Well, yeah, my favourite living animal in general is the killer whale, the orca. Just because, like, 
again, they're just so cool. <laughs> but like, uh, the family bonds they have, the, the, like, the social lives, is really interesting. Oh, I've done a few videos on them. Seen them in the wild, which is incredible. And they look, they look cool. There we go, that's my answer. My favourite animal is octopuses, uh, specifically the common octopus, just because of how incredibly intelligent they are. And, you know, like, there's nothing really else like them. So, yeah. Uh, my favourite animal is the, uh, the hedgehog. Um, <laughs> I think I, simply just because it's really, really cute. Um, and I, I, I tend to be sometimes a bit of a sucker for that. And uh, I, I always wanted a pet hedgehog when I was little. Because um, I did a research thing when I was years and years and years ago for school. Um, and apparently, if you have one as a pet, it, you could just put it in front of the TV all day, and that's all you need to do. Then you take it on walks or anything. It, you just chuck it in front of the TV and it, it enjoyed watching TV. So that, that captivated me. Uh, but yeah, hedgehogs, they're cool. Check a picture of a cute hedgehog I'm now. Thank right. you, editor. Matt, what about you? What was it, my favourite animal? Yeah, living animal. Uh, I'll probably have to go with humans, really. <laughs> I mean, just generally We're the best cool. creatures, honestly. <laughs> we got a question here from uh, Kick Nook. Uh, I think we deserve to know where the real Benji Thomas is and what you guys have done with him. Um, don't know what you're well. There's a question here asking, how did you get into biology slash paleontology? Well, um, pretty much since, like, for as long as I can remember, watching uh, The Land Before Time yeah. and Walking with Dinosaurs, Jurassic Park. Those are all like really big inspirations, like getting me obsessed with dinosaurs. Our parents are both scientists. Our mother is a biologist, so she like encouraged our uh, interest in animals and, and dinosaurs. Um, pretty much Land Before Time, Jurassic Park, Walking with Dinosaurs. Those are like really big inspirations, getting into paleontology and then just like Kind of from paleontology into like general zoology and biology and stuff. So, maybe. Uh, basically the same. Yeah. Just just what about you? Yeah. Well, um, my, my, when I was younger, quite young, like tiny. Um, Dad always used to like take me to museums in London and the Natural History Museum. I thought all the dinosaurs were just so cool. Um, and I remember once when I was very small, like five or something, um, I completed this like online quiz and I did quite well and they gave me a little certificate, which was like nothing, but I was really proud of it. Um, so, I, I'm not nowhere near as into dinosaurs uh, as Ben is, uh, of course. I don't think anyone is, actually. Um, <laughs> but it, I think they're just fascinating, um, and there is always that really childish aspect of uh, there were these kind of absolutely massive creatures running around um, where we are right now, and I think it's just awesome, so yeah. Okay, so we've got a couple questions here about our favourite geological eras. There's um, one says, what's your favourite prehistoric era? And the other says, which time in the geological periods is your favourite when it comes down to species <coughs> that, exi that existed slash exists that you think is cool and are fascinated by? Greetings from Norway. Oh, thank you. Greetings from England. Hello, Norway. <laughs> so... Per Norway, you just made that joke. Oh my god. <laughs> right, so my favourite prehistoric era would probably have to be the Cambrian. Um, especially because of like... Yeah, like Anomalocaris lives then. Uh, I, I just love to see Anomalocaris, um, Pikaia, Hallucigenia, all the weird ones, Opabinia. They'd be so cool to see. They're just wonderful life, you know. And Aaron's read that book. What? What's yours? Uh, mine is also the Cambrian. Oh. Uh, just because it has some of like the the strangest and most unique life forms that have ever existed. So just like the Anomalocaris is just like. Nothing really compares to it. Mm. So, yeah. What's yours? Uh, my favourite is the Cretaceous. Now, other fans of the Cretaceous will know exactly why I chose this one, so I will say no more. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, there's also another question that says, What time period would you most like to visit if you had a time machine and why? And I'm going to change the answer from the Cambrian because they're all kind of underwater, deep, dark, scary diving wouldn't want to do that. Um, so, probably Cretaceous, just because, like, you see some, some T Rexes and as dark kids, you know. Some Ankylosaurus. Yeah, things. exactly. Ankylosaurus. It would just. <laughs> like, you could finally settle a debate of. Uh, so a lot of a lot of dinosaur and other prehistoric animal life appearance, which would be useful. What about you? Me? Oh! Does it have any parameters? What period? I don't know. Um, I'd quite like to go to the medievals, because, like, there's so many uh, movies and stuff. Um, and you see little medieval villages and towns and stuff. I just want to see what one actually looked like. 
I mean, Rome, you can roughly see what it looks like because of all the goddamn ruins everywhere. Um, well, I'd quite like to see a little medieval village and see what happens. A battle would be quite cool, though, to have a look at. Go so, and watch a battle and something like, mm. something like Agincourt for all you French, um, French viewers. Mate. Um, this is really hard. Um, see, I would probably want to go with Fertile Crescent, you know, like near, near the dawn of civilization, see like ancient Samaria and stuff like that. Just because, like, with the medieval era, you've got like castles and stuff, and you have a pretty good overview of what life was like. But Samaria was like, it was the dawn of humanity's great civilizations, and I just want to see like how it all developed, you know. Right, so we've got a series of questions here from Gumball the Baby Triceratops. The first one is, what's your favourite herbivorous dinosaur? And don't just say Triceratops because I'm here, be honest. Well, uh, same as my favourite dinosaur, which would be Thrasinosaurus, so it's a likely herbivorous theropod, which is cool. Okay, what's yours? Uh, mine would be Edmontosaurus, because uh, it was pretty common in the Canadian Badlands, and I don't know, they're just kind of pretty generic, but like a like a pretty solid, you know, herbivore. Just just a very generic dinosaur, and I kind of like that. Cool. Yeah, it's got to be Ankylosaurus. It's a herbivore. It's a cool dinosaur. Refer to my previous answer. Right, we've got a question here. What are your thoughts on Mark Wickham's crazy theory on Triceratops horns? Uh, here's the study. Um, I think they're pretty cool, but uh, I'll, I'll move on to Ben. He knows more about it yeah. than I do. So, so basically, the, it's a blog post. That's, um, it looks at how keratin sheaths grow over bony horn cores in living animals. Uh, it looks at bovids. He tries to predict how uh, they might grow in, in spirals, basically, and says that we should consider this for Triceratops because we, we have a lot of a lot of fossils of different growth stages of Triceratops as like really young individuals up to older ones. Um, and when they're younger, the, the horns curve back and then as they get older, they curve forwards. And what Mark Wilson says is basically that if the keratin sheaths that, that are like extending the horn, core, horn cores are not dynamic, so they couldn't change shape as it grew, and they're just like a, a series of older keratin plates like you see in bovids, then the horn shape would be quite curvy, like kind of going that sort of. He's got he's got some cool reconstructions of it. Picture. Um, yeah. He yeah he, he definitely says that you, you need an actual study, and the, the blog is just a thought experiment and a suggestion that there's there's definitely more more we can find out about horns and spikes on extinct animals. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to do an actual study on, and like if if triceratops horns are anything like modern bovids, then yeah, it seems kind of logical that they would be quite curvy. But yeah, like, as, as he says in the blog, it could, you could extend this argument to other species, and it would also provide some interesting information on the behaviour of the animals, like how these curvy horns would affect that. Uh, the next question from uh, Gumball is, is it okay to ask questions in bulk? Yes. Yep. You have done so, it is fine. And the final one is, was T-Rex a scavenger? <laughs> Which oh is, boy. Uh, well, I believe he's referring to Jack Horner here. Uh, no. <laughs> Basically, because that's been debunked. Uh, there are literally bite marks, healed bite marks from hadrosaurs and triceratops, which match a T-Rex tooth, which means the T-Rex actively bit the animal, the animal survived, and it healed, which means it's going after live animals, which means it's not primarily a scavenger, is it? That's the end of that. Yeah. Right, we've got a question here from Victorian Rex, and they ask, would the T-Rex be considered the Jaguar of the Cretaceous? That's a, that's a pretty good uh, pretty good question. Um, I'd say in a way, kind of. Um, they're both like filling similar niches, they're top predators. Uh, the Jaguar is pretty general on what it preys on, from what the research I've done suggests. Uh, feeding on caimans, capybaras, tapir, deer, oh, not as, well, as well as pretty small <laughs> animals like uh, frogs and mice, which I guess you could say is kind of similar to T-Rex preying on, uh, as I mentioned before, definitely preyed on hadrosaurs such as Amontosaurus and Ceratopsians such as Triceratops, um, kind of general-ish I guess. But the way in which the jaguars actually like dispatch their prey is uh, quite different. A lot of the time they employ the, the classic big cat method of biting the throat and suffocating the prey. But interestingly, I have found that apparently they also 
pierce right through the temporal uh, bones of the skull and just like pierce right into the brain, which is nice. Which nice. you could sort of, in a way, compare to T Rex, but then again, like T Rex is, is more just like crushing bone power to access the inside. Just of the a lot more strength. Yeah, like T Rex bite is is. It's like a knife, a sharp. It's like, it's, it's like a knife compared to a blunt yeah. mace. Oh. No, so, no, you don't kill people with a blunt knife. Not that I'm planning on killing anyone. That yeah. sounded really. You seem like so an expert. I, I, I basically say, in a way. Okay. Okay, so we have a question from Paul Blanchard. I live on the south coast of England, specifically the Isle of Wight, and where I surf, most days is part of the Jurassic Coast. I often see half-broken fossilised trees just laying on the beach, and it is so obvious that they were once living, breeding, photosynthesising plants. My question is, what plant were they? When do they come from? Or oh, when and where do they come from? Alright, so, uh, I did a bit of re research on this. Uh, they're probably gymnos gymnosperm, gymnosperm <laughs> trees of some kind. Uh, not sure exactly what, but maybe conifers or something. Um, I assume that's that's what you're seeing. Yeah, the rocks, the rocks in the from we said Compton are Cretaceous, uh, but the, like that that exact beach is like made up of several units. So there's some Wealden rocks and upper and lower green sand. The the area that the, the rocks represent are they, they were like a, a muddy lagoon back in the Cretaceous. So that's uh, where they would would have been from. And Cretaceous is when. Um, and interesting, you can also see iguanodon footprint casts, which uh, I've actually seen myself when I visited the area. They're really cool. They're like literally just, whoops, just like blocks, <laughs> blocks on the beach that are like covered in in seaweed. Uh, so they're like these big green iguanodon footprints, which is really cool. So you might have seen those as well. You're taking questions. Yes, we are. Um, next, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, what in the world even are turtles? Uh, turtles. I mean, we're pretty clear on what kinds of turtles there are, but uh, where on the tree would you put them? So, oh, Ben again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, turtle phylogeny is uh, quite, quite heavily debated. Uh, in the past, they've been placed as archosaurs, um, as a sister taxon to archosaurs, uh, within the anapsids, and even as lepidosaurs. I, I've, I've read that a lot of molecular studies support them as being uh, diapsids, as in, like, um, an actual sister tax on two archosaurs, so that's probably where I would put them, but then again, I'm no turtle expert. So, yeah, I, I would say diapsids uh, within Archosauromorpha in Pantest... God. Pantestudines. Pantestudines. Yes. Pantestudines. Um, yeah. The problem with turtles is their skull has uh, looks like an anapsid skull, but if they're diapsids, then it would just be like a reverted condition, which is which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, from Equi, what is your opinion on Tyrannosaur lips? Ooh. Okay. So, as uh, Mark Wilson says in his article on this, it's whenever you ask this question, it's like uh, what was it? Lighting a match in a barn full of hay. Yeah, I'd say re definitely read Mark Wilson's blog post about it. We'll link it in the description because that's a really good objective review of the data we have. Personally, I would say probably lipped in some form. I'm aware of the Caratel paper from 2017 that, that suggested that they weren't lipped and they had uh, crocodile lips. Not, not lips, like a crocodile condition. But there are some issues with that particular claim uh, that Mark Wilson goes into on his blog. I would suggest, again, reading that. The, the blog suggests that there could have been like ornamental epidermal scales around the jaw, so it'd have like a, a lining of uh, nice looking scales around his lips, which, yeah, could have been ornamental, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, uh, lipped in some way, there we go. Oh, we've got a question here from Hyman Rebels 2 and referring to my last comment, any developments on any cool games you guys play? Uh, and I won't indulge you, what program do you use for your music? So, Matt, what program do you use for uh, our music? Well, for uh, the music uh, that's playing in the back of, hopefully, this video, uh, I use a program called Mixcraft. I, I also use uh, Sibelius 7 quite a lot for kind of bigger projects, but uh, Mixcraft. Right, games. Games, right. Um, you go first, Ben. Well... Did we mention Life is Strange before? We did, I, I think, <laughs> I, I, I looked at the last one to see what we said, um, yeah. and like, we nearly forgot it, and I said, don't you like Life is Strange? And then you're like, oh yeah, that's a good game. Now he likes Life now, is Strange. Now, um, he persuaded me to get it, and now we're both obsessed. Yeah. Um, but Life is Strange, if you want the story game, check it out, it's so good. Yeah, time travel and stuff as well, mm. so it's like where I am in there. Uh, as far as games that I like, play regularly, GTA, 
still. I think I said that in the last one as well. Um, Saurian has been, been developing nicely. And I'm really excited for Jurassic World Evolution when that comes out. Definitely probably going to be play, uh, streaming some of that from the channel. That's going to be really cool. Yeah, I played a bit of Planet Coaster, which I think yeah. the same people who made yeah, Jurassic World Evolution. Frontier, Frontier yeah. development, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, Total War strategy games I like. Um, bit of Overwatch now and again. Nothing. Nothing particularly major. A bit of Paradox games, if I can work out how to play them, which I can't most of the time. Uh, Matt, uh, what about yeah, you? I play a few Paradox games, uh, Hearts of Iron 4, uh, and also kind of a lot of GTA. I've got yeah. quite a few hours. Too of many GTA. hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Matt Blade Warband, I think, is my most played game on Steam, but also nice science one um, Kerbal Space Program. Yeah. That's a good one. Kerbal Space yeah. Program. So, Nautica as well. Only Kerbal Space Program. Also, Gorn, you've just knocked the camera, you twit. Just, just okay, speak. Um, let's see, Fallout series, Elder Scrolls, any like RPG. Uh, GTA, definitely, most played game. Um, City Skylines, like management, like that. That's pretty good, yeah. I love Skyrim. Okay, so we've got a couple of similar questions here. One from Freedom Mythic says, uh, have you got any background or degrees in the sciences or planning slash working on to get that? You certainly give that impression. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, also from Robert Fletcher, my question, I, like I am sure many others, are impressed with the quality of your channel. Your research is excellent and references are made to academic papers. Beneath all the laughter and jokes, you guys are serious stuff. Yeah. I take it you all want to go on to university, but will this ultimately lead you to paleontology? What is the future you all hope you all hope to follow? Good luck, you guys are great. Thank, Thank you very much, much Robert. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, uh, future uh, uh, and uh, university. Yeah, well, um, <coughs> currently, um, I'm, I'm more going down the humanitarian route of um, maybe, maybe like histories and stuff like that, and humanitarian stuff. Um, but of course, I still keep massive, massive interest in the sciences, um, keeping up with the news as I have to for certain other sides. Um, but yeah. Uh, University, probably, uh, um, at some point. Um, we'll probably go down the histories at the, but I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> but Ben, yeah, what, what about you? Yeah, so at the moment I'm studying like uh, geology, biology kind of thing, so obviously that, that's, uh, will we'll hopefully lead to paleontology. Definitely planning to, at university, uh, like do a degree in paleontology, that's what I want to do. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, currently I'm doing like history, uh, geography, PRS, biology, so I'm hoping that's going to lead on to maybe a law degree in environmental law to, you know, like tie in science, and that, that's like my main goal. Um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm quite interested in doing music. Uh, I want to go to a conservatoire or university to do a music composition and uh, hopefully be a composer. You can help that by supporting his channel at Matt Holloway. M. Holloway. M. Holloway. Holloway. <laughs> it's in the description. Guys. <laughs> it's in the description. Right, thank you so much for watching this Q and A. Uh, it's been a real joy looking through your comments and seeing all the questions you guys um, have posted. Uh, thank you so much for so many questions. We're sorry we can't answer them all, but thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you for all the support from other videos. You know, people still commenting on those. Yeah, it's, it's been really fun interacting with the community and I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully you can, it's helped you get to know us a bit better and clarify who we actually are uh, and what we want to do with the channel. Um, thank you so much for 20,000, it's, it's quite incredible. And uh, here's to 30,000. Goodbye! Bye! <laughs>